All right. Well, here we are. Uh, we're in the garage, looking at a what this is is a two and a half liter uh, Jeep engine, uh, made by AMC or Chrysler, someone. It's it's no one, so it kind of varies on who you talk to and who made it. But it's two and a half liter, four cylinder. We're doing a rebuild on it, uh, a partial rebuild, I guess you could say, due to uh, piston failure. So I was driving home from work one day. I started knocking. I parked it. Dropped the oil pan, and I found this in the oil pan. Uh, it's uh, pieces of the sleeve, or skirt, excuse me, skirt, from the number two piston. Uh, you can see from from looking up inside the engine what, what was broken. But I, I pulled the engine out, and here it is, and this is the piston. It's the number two piston. Uh, broken here. It's supposed to look like this, come all the way down there. But instead, it looked like this, uh, pretty gnarly. Pretty, uh, pretty surprised to see that, but, but it gave me a reason to tear it down, so I uh, can't complain too much. But uh, the reason for this video isn't so much uh, rebuild or anything like that, because there is just lots and lots of information to go over, even for a simple rebuild. Uh, like, you know, these, these color markings here, what they mean, I mean, it's all, uh, it all means something, and there's a lot more than I thought there would be. But we're just going to talk about plastic gauge for today and if you guys are like me you didn't know what plastic gauge was until it was necessary I read about it in the in the books and in the readings and I did some uh, YouTube search because you know you can find anything on YouTube uh, and this is plastic gauge it was even mentioned in the rebuild manual that I got so uh, it's been around a while it's, must be, it's, a, it's a pretty good deal but it's made by sealed power comes in a bunch of different sizes uh, this size is a one to or ten to thirty thousandths uh, or one to three thousand, excuse me. And all it is is a, I don't know if you can see that on the camera there, but it's just a little green piece of plastic that is, you know, a certain amount of size or whatever. However, they, those guys with the big heads figure it out. But uh, we'll kind of get into how we do this. But it's about, I paid two and a half dollars for it at the, one of the outer parts store. And it came about, you know, Two feet worth or a foot and a half worth and it's uh, well worth the money but what you do is uh, you want to get your piece of plastic out just kind of come down here to the bearing okay you just kind of roll your plastic out you can touch it it's, it's as far as I can tell it's just some sort of plastic and you want to cut the cut the, cut the gauge, plastic gauge off right about as wide as the bearing a little extra piece there. Let me put that away. Okay, you want to keep that that guy straight on there, because it's gonna. It tells you a couple things. It tells you the clearance within the bearing, and also if there's any taper on the bearing. If there's taper, of course, then you gotta either there, there's a piece of dirt or something in here, or on your uh, bearing cap, or your uh, shaft, your your crank bearing needs to be worked. Uh, so once you get that on there and straight. You take your bearing cap, see it's been cleaned, I wiped all the oil off of it, and then uh, you want to orient it so the number one, there's number one on there, so that you're reading it straight up and down, well there's a number for each bearing, this happens to be number one, reads straight up and down when you're on the side with the camshaft, okay? So you just set it down in there. and tighten it down. Uh, as far as torque specs goes, uh, you can find them almost anywhere. I mean, all the forums had them, and uh, you can just do a, like a Google search for it, and it's pretty easy. You see, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a gap right here because it kind of sits down under the shoulder here. And you don't need to force it with your fingers or anything. You get your torque wrench, it's just a standard micrometer torque wrench. I picked it up at one of the auto parts store for about 30 bucks. Uh, you can rent these if you don't want to buy them. Uh, most you know auto parts stores these days will rent them to you for free or you know borrow them lend them to you for free there we go now that fell down inside that shoulder but the one that the auto parts store I chose had was 0 to 250 and I wanted to be a lot closer to the uh, you know within the same range or close to it I want to be right around 100 pounds for this whole build I didn't want a 0 to 250 but you want to kind of do it in increments so I pull it about halfway. I mean, it's just a just feel. You know. 
You know what 80 pounds feels like? You can guess 40. Okay, and you come back and do the final torque. There at 80. And same thing over here. There we go. All right, and that brings up a good point is when you're putting the plastic gauge on there, you want to make sure that the crank doesn't turn because it will smear the plastic and it might give you a, a wrong measurement. Okay, so now that it's torqued on there, there's no wait time, there's no soak time. And you take it right back off. Now loosen that one. Loosen that one. And then you're just going to back right back out of it. There we go. Pull it up. Now the same plastic uh, color will be on the, the bearing cap. You can kind of see it here. I'm going to measure the one, measure the one on the, the bearing or the, the crankshaft journal there. And to measure it, it's, uh, it's again one of those brilliant inventions with a wrapper, you just cut a piece of the wrapper off and it has the standard on it. Uh, it's got both uh, metric and standard, uh, since I live in America, I use standard. Uh, but the book gives you both if you choose, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so you just run it up here and you check the width all the way across it. Right, it seems to be a little bit smaller than 15 thousandths, maybe a little bit right there. I'm bigger than 20 thousandths, so it's between 15 and 20, and the, the spec for this is between 1 and 30 thousandths. So, so we're good there, and I've already checked all the bearings. They're all good to go. All the, all the journal bearings, all the uh, connecting rod bearings, and they're well within spec. So I won't be replacing all those bearings uh, this time around, maybe next time. I mean, these bearings have been known to last you know, 200,000 miles or so, so I didn't really expect to have to uh, replace them, and it did definitely reduce the cost of this rebuild, because uh, all I'm going to have to do is replace the the pistons and the rings, and then put it all back together and fire it back up. Uh, but anyway, that's Plastic Age. Uh, I hope it was informative. I hope it kind of removes some of the fuzziness on how to use it, because I was, I, was, I was lost on it, but uh, that's it. I hope it helped. Take care.